And part of what I want to talk about is how difficult it is to get that evidence and how difficult it is to validate it, uh, but how important it is as well. Um, because these things are symbols of learning. <clears throat> um, and they're also symbols of the person's success. And, you know, one of my um, greatest learnings from working in this area is just how important it is the APL process for people in terms of uh, them uh, as individuals understanding what it is they've done in their life. And it's, it's usually such an empowering process for them and, and an enlightening one for you to help them, you know, really explore, um, you know, at, at, from undergraduate level through to doctoral level again, um, what it is they have done and, and what it is they know. Uh, and, and that obviously has uh, some effect on their sense of identity. So I think that you can find evidence of professional identity shift, if you like, if I put it in that way, um, through um, <coughs> going through the uh, APL process, and particularly at doctorate level, where you've got people who are laying down some really substantial pieces of evidence. So what we're looking at today then is deconstructing or valuing these things. And it's a sort of a, it's a, it's a weighty, heavy load now. I mean, if you think about your practices uh, as higher education practitioners now, you know, you, you set an e exam or you set an essay and you read it through and you say, well, they haven't mentioned so-and-so's theory or, you know, they haven't synthesized these pieces of knowledge together and so on. Um, and that's a weighty task. I always think that's a weighty task for us to do, you know, to, to do that. But we're trained to do that, and we do do that. But when somebody brings along something that they have done, how do we go about unpicking that and looking between the lines of that and seeing w what it is that they must know in order to have done that? And how do we draw out from them? Because I, believe me, you do have to draw it out sometimes, uh, what it is that underpinned all of those different developments that they did. Um, so we're looking at assessing the proce uh, process of learning, but we're also looking at the, something substantial, something that uh, exists often. Um, and then there's a couple of other points there that are of importance, I think, to us, uh, reflection and reflective practice. Again, I think that's sort of creeping into quite a lot of courses in higher education now. Um, but clearly, obviously, what they say is a very important thing. And in terms of people gain credit for things that they have done. How much is it about what they have actually done and how much is it about how much they can reflect on what it is they've done? How much is it important that we have to draw out um, or even develop their reflective practice skills in order to, to give them credit for the things that they've done? If they could develop something without knowing why, could we still give them the credit for it? Interesting question. The other thing is theory and practice. Clearly in academia, theory tends to be at the forefront. We, we, when we're reading that essay, writing um, our, top, uh, write, writing our uh, assessments for a module, we're thinking about what theories people might be wanting to put forward. But when it's about practice, uh, when what you're looking at is someone's practice, how much is theory important? How, where do we put it? Does it have to be there? Where does it have to be? Is it supposed to be at the forefront or at the background? 